Hello friends. About two months ago I converted a robotic vacuum cleaner to remote control for the German television film Die Füchsin Part 4. And just about a week ago then, out of nowhere really, I got a call from yet another TV production company asking about a remote controlled robot of their own. This time the requirements were very different though. While the first robot was supposed to be a surveillance tool for a crime film, the second robot was meant to be used in a hidden camera prank show for which the robot needed to be really fast and able to accelerate on the spot, so people were unable to catch it. The three main requirements were build a machine that looks like a robotic vacuum so that the average person can't see right away that it has been tempered with, make it really fast and make it fit inside the enclosure of an actual vacuum bot. Meeting these three criteria and doing that within just one week until the shoot would take place posed a major challenge. But I think the platform I build here could be more than that and I think it would be well suited as a general purpose platform for small robots. And I think there are a lot of interesting general lessons in this project. So let me show you how I did this. Now some people will suggest that the easiest solution would be to just glue a robot's enclosure onto an RC car and there you go. But the TV company told me that that is exactly not what they wanted because it would be way too obvious, especially when random passengers in this hidden camera show would catch the robot and turn it around. And for that reason, among others, I built a drivetrain with wheels, motors, etc. from scratch. In my projects I always try to use salvaged or surplus parts and materials. The only platform though that I know in Germany that sells electronic and mechanical surplus or remaining stock parts is Pollen. I have no affiliation with this company whatsoever, but among German tinkerers Pollin is very well known and hardly needs any advertisements. But I support the idea of using parts that are unused, yet the industrial application of which does not exist anymore. These motors are a good example. A high quality 12 volt DC motor with a ball bearing and a rated power of over 110 watts for 95 cents. These motors will have more than enough power to make the robot accelerate very quickly. I will make no more comments about the specific retailers and products I use in this video, but will instead leave a comment about that in the comment section. The wheels that I will use are 75 mm in diameter and made from galvanized steel and rubber and have a roller bearing for 12 mm axles inside. To connect the wheels and motors together and also allow for a reduction in speed, I use pulleys and toothed belts of the type GT2. Just a few years ago these parts were hardly available, but since they are used in 3D printers they are now quite cheap and abundant and much easier to get than actual gears. But both the motors, wheels and pulleys will have to be customized to work in conjunction. The motors come with flanges cast from an aluminium alloy. I suspect that they were intended to be used to power a pump or compressor in some automotive application. I use an angle grinder to cut lots of parallel slits into the unneeded parts of the cast material. Then I use pliers to pry off the rather brittle material. Excess material that protrudes beyond the rear bushing of the motor is also cut away. The motors must be minimized in their physical dimensions to fit inside the robot's plastic enclosure. The motors have 6mm shafts and therefore I ordered GT2 pulleys with 16 teeth and a 6mm bore. The pulleys can be fastened with two small Allen screws, but they have to be glued in place or otherwise they would shake loose. Therefore I apply a very strong type of Loctite to the threads here. The wheels of course were never intended to be connected to a motor but I will still use them for that purpose. I calculate and mark three equidistant spots both on the wheels as well as on the pulleys and I drill three millimeter holes in both parts. These pulleys have 60 teeth. The more teeth they have compared to the small pulleys on the motor shaft, the larger the reduction. 60 teeth is the largest type these pulleys can usually be found at online, while 16 
is the smallest. I increase the 8mm bore to a value over 12mm. In this case, 15, because that's the size of drill that I just happen to have here. Three M3 screws here from galvanized steel, but preferably from stainless steel are used to connect both parts together. All nuts are glued in place with Loctite. A 12 mm stainless steel axle is used to hold the wheels. This particular axle is scrap from a bicycle store, but you could use an M12 screw with self-locking nuts instead. In the next step I had to gut the type of robot we had chosen to be the model to be used for the shoot. Out of convenience I had pitched using the exact same type of robot that I had already worked on before. I already filmed a complete teardown of this type of robot a few weeks ago and you can find that very easily in my back catalog. For this video it should suffice to say that I gutted the entire machine until it was nothing but an empty shell. Next I used a drill, an angle grinder and some hand tools to remove the bottom plate from the robot. After having done that I took a piece of scrap aluminium that I had salvaged from an old cupboard to cut out a new plate on which the motors would be mounted. I did that in a primitive way with nothing but an angle grinder, old fashioned files and a drill press. In order to actually hold the wheels I used standard steel tubes to weld a frame that would be bolted onto the aluminium plate. Threads were cut into the motors and standard aluminium extrusions were used to hold the motors in place. The functional mechanical part was basically finished but the electronics still needed to be added. In this step I used a 2.4 GHz receiver and standard speed controllers of the exact same type I had used in my first robot. The batteries that would be used were the original 14.8 volt lithium ion batteries used by these robots. But that turned out to be totally overpowered so that I later switched to two cells instead of four reducing the average supply voltage to around 7 volts, which turned out to be enough. Later, a small furniture type caster wheel was added instead of the original third wheel to adjust for the correct height and carry the now much heavier robot. From a purely technical perspective, the robot was now finished. But with the silverish look of the new aluminium body, the fact that the robot had been modified was still way too obvious. I then bent little aluminium sheets in shape and glued them onto the base plate to cover the existing gaps in the enclosure. Then, just two days before the shoot, I finally applied black color to the bottom of the robot and hoped that it would dry in due time. Of course, there were other things left to take care of, like improving the wiring and making sure nothing shook loose while driving. Actually, Fastening the plastic enclosure and making it possible to remove it quickly to repair the robot on site if needed and swap the batteries quickly which turned out to be necessary after every 30 minutes of filming. One day later I presented the robot to the production company and they were very satisfied with its speed and appearance. I filmed this footage here on my way back home on a nearby parking lot just because I was in such a good mood. I spent the next day making minor adjustments and training to operate the robot since I would also be the robot operator at the shoot.
And then again, one day later, I drove to Krefeld, where the shoot was taking place. The stakes had rarely been higher for me. Several camera teams had come in addition to the normal staff that runs a TV production set. And everything basically depended on the robot working as planned and me not screwing up to operate it between all those random passengers that constantly blocked my line of sight while I was hidden in the first story of this restaurant here. But long story short, everything worked out as planned. We filmed for five or six hours. The main protagonists were basically two people. My robot, controlled by me behind the scenes, and the lovely uh, Rebecca Mir, TV celebrity best known for her role in the show Germany's Next Top Model. She really did a great job interacting with the robot and everything turned out just fine. I will leave a better description about what the show is about and when it will be broadcast, etc. in the comment section though. So I hope that you like the way I solved this problem and that it has given you some ideas for your own projects. And if you liked it, then please give it a like. And the next video will then be again about one of my own independent projects. And I hope to see you soon.